On February 26, 1941, the U.S. Army Air Corps made a strategic decision regarding the placement of national insignia on their aircraft. They restricted the wing markings to the upper left wing and the underside of the right wing. Why was this decision made? Firstly, this asymmetrical placement was intended to help pilots and anti-aircraft crews quickly recognize friend from foe. With conflicts spreading globally, rapid identification became crucial to avoid friendly fire incidents. Secondly, there was a tactical advantage. By avoiding symmetrical markings, having insignia on both wings, it prevented enemy gunners from using them as reference points to aim between. In aerial combat, even a split-second delay or miscalculation could mean the difference between life and death. Alongside the change in wing markings, the Air Corps also removed rudder stripes from camouflaged aircraft. This was part of a broader effort to reduce visibility to the enemy while maintaining essential identification features. But the U.S. Navy had its own ideas. On January 5, 1942, the Navy reverted to placing insignia on both wings. They also introduced a red dot within a white star on a larger blue circle and added 13 red and white stripes to the rudder. However, combat experiences in the Pacific Theater brought challenges. The Japanese aircraft prominently featured a red rising sun, causing confusion. To avoid misidentification, the U.S. forces decided to remove the red dot from their insignia. On May 15, 1942, the red dot was officially eliminated from the American Star insignia. But the evolution didn't stop there. To further distinguish American planes from Japanese ones, white rectangles, often referred to as wings, were added to each side of the blue circle on June 28, 1943. This change not only enhanced recognition, but also symbolized the adaptability of the U.S. military during wartime. Interestingly, the U.S. Navy and Marine Corps eventually adopted the asymmetrical placement as well. On February 1, 1943, they returned to featuring the national insignia on just one wing. This move aligned them with the practices of the Army Air Forces and continued the emphasis on both tactical advantage and identification clarity. The changes in aircraft markings during World War II highlight the dynamic nature of warfare and the continuous efforts to improve both offense and defense. From aiding in quick identification to preventing the enemy from gaining an aiming advantage, these modifications played a subtle yet important role in aerial combat. Understanding these historical nuances gives us a deeper appreciation for the strategies employed and the experiences of those who served in the skies during one of the most challenging times in history. Thanks for joining us on this journey through aviation history. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more fascinating insights into the past.